Doggy, I think we might be going live. Welcome to the stream, everybody. I hope you all can hear me and all that fun stuff. Uh, video is loading up now. I'm getting the chat loaded up here. You start to see me in just a few seconds. I'm checking Mixer and Twitch and the YouTubes and all that fun stuff. It looks like YouTube's ready to go. Hmm. All right, guys, happy Thursday, and welcome to the stream. It's Thursday the 12th, and you know what that means for tomorrow. At least I hope you do. Um, <clears throat> once again, as you can see, last week we did these cool little artist trading cards. Um, so there you have them. Uh, on Bristol Board, which I always draw on, the Strathmore, I like it a lot. Smooth surface, two and a half by three and a half, trading card size, and we're going to do some more today. So buckle up. Got my pencil, eraser, pens, ready to go. And we bust a fresh one out of the package. So I hope everybody out there in chat land is doing pretty good today. If anybody is watching right now, I have, I have no idea, but... Uh, Hello, <laughs> good to see you. Um, if you have any things you want to see, throw them out there. Otherwise, I'm just going to start doing some, you know, like a, a random one or something like that. Uh, and I will set these here. Jared, how you doing today, my friend? Hi, Koi Lei Ang, how are you? Good to see you. Good, glad you guys could make it. I am certainly happy to be here, and I am certainly doing pretty awesome. You guys can hear me all right, then? If anybody has a suggestion that they want to throw out for this first card, since you guys are uh, early to the stream, let me know, and I'll do it. Otherwise, I was thinking about doing, like, Freddy or Michael Myers or something like that to kind of go with the slashery theme, but I'll do anything. A fish monster like the shape of the water. Koi, you got it. Sounds good. I actually saw a fish of the water, or a fish of the water. I actually saw a shape of the water recently. I really enjoyed it. It was very good. Dirty glasses. I'm giving you guys dirty looks. Ugh. bird or air monster i'll do whatever man if you if you're looking into if you're looking for a fish monster i got you covered a bird monster we could do the giant claw <laughs> if anybody knows what that is uh now do you want the fish monster specifically from the shape of the water because we can do that we, we can do that specific fish guy I, I am good with that. I am good with whatever. We could do the creature from the Black Lagoon. We could just make one up. No big deal. It's all good. But, uh, yeah, whatever you guys want to see, I am totally, totally good with. So let's just start drawing in fish monster type head, and we can, uh, as you guys decide, we can go from there. Uh, as always, I'm going to start with like circular. I always start with circles to kind of just get the, the head in and just the general shape. And then go from there. Thank you, Koi. <laughs> Much obliged, my friend. Much obliged. Thank you. I did like that that uh, fish monster guy in Shape of the Water had more powers than just like, you know, slapping a dude with claws. That was pretty cool. I did not ex I did not expect that, but now I see why the Amazons worshipped it as a god. Great flick. Guillermo del Toro knocking out of the park. I, th I, I don't know. Did you guys see Crimson Peak? Did anybody see Crimson Peak? 
I like Crimson Peak. I can see why a lot of people didn't. Oh, thank you, Koi. You are awesome as well, and I'm glad you found the channel. Uh, uh, I'm glad you found the channel also. Thank you. But uh, Crimson Peak, man, I, I dug it. I can see why a lot of people felt baited and switched. With that, but I, I kind of, I dug it. I try, Koi, I try. I try to be try to be real so currently i'm doing the i'll do the fish monster from shape of the water here i brought up some reference so i can remember just what the heck he looks like which is pretty cool now i don't know are there are there other because unfortunately in doing in doing this and trying to produce art and like everything else in my life i don't have a ton of time to seek out new like and watch other live streams you know or other artists or anything are there a lot of people that do like art live streams online i usually sometimes i'll hop on twitch and look there and it's usually like people doing um like digital art and stuff like in photoshop which is cool don't get me wrong but I don't know. Are there many people that do art type stuff out there? I have I have no idea. And if you have any recommendations of people I should be watching, let me know. Yeah, I think the fish guy is uh, awesome in that movie too. He's he's cool. The design's great that the the monster makers did because they didn't make it like. Like, he looks like someone that the main lady could fall in love with. He's not completely grotesque. Not completely grotesque. Which is, which is, I think, what you need for that, for that type of movie. You know? If he was, if he was too much... Fish guy, if he was too much monster, I guess we'll say, it would have just, it would have fallen flat. So he's got like all these gills, or not gills, but fins here. That is cool. I dig it. Yeah, good design. I love great monster design, you guys. You guys know me. I, I like my monsters. Maybe something would give... I don't know what would give that away, but I do like my monsters. It's good stuff. And then on his shoulders, it looks like he has the, the blue lines kind of in there. I'm just going to do that in for now. So I'm thinking, I don't know about you guys, but just off the bat, from having seen the movie, I'm thinking like a dark greenish for the background. What do you think? I think that would be cool. Let's bust out the markers. Yeah, I think traditional art is, uh, Koi, I, I, you know, just from things I know, is uh, looking at products, like the products that I like, like Dungeons and Dragons, even in some comic books and stuff like that, like the art seems to have gone almost completely digital in a lot of ways, um, which is fine. I mean, I'm not, I'm not one of those guys that's going to knock digital art isn't you know, actual art, like I know there are some artists that do that or whatever. I just prefer doing the traditional myself. Uh, I like it a lot, you know, but um, to each their own. If, if you're good with the, the digital, then, then you should definitely do it. As long as you're making cool stuff, big part of me doesn't care how it's, how it's done, you know. But for me, this is what I like. This is what I like. But yeah, the shape of the water. Uh, <laughs> if it if it was if he was like a horrific beastly looking dude, I don't know. I'd kind of maybe I'd like that even more. I don't know. <laughs> it's 
It's hard to find really good shots of this guy to get any good drawings because he's very uh, dark in the movies, like cast in uh, shadows. So I'm just trying to get a nice shot of his head so I can see what he looks like. There we go. Like a lot of this pre-production behind the scenes stuff is, is good. There, that's pretty cool. There we go. All right, I found something that's halfway decent that I can use, so that's good. And again, like uh, like last week, we're going to do a lot with the, um, um, what the heck is the word I'm looking for? The uh, We're going to use our multi-liners instead of a brush on these just because of the, the small size. And that's going to be great. So let's get this filled in. Speaking of modern movies, I saw Ready Player One recently and uh, loved the heck out of it. Not as good as the book, which I absolutely love the book. But, uh, you know, still pretty good. I, I dug the movie for what it was. It was different, but I liked it. I would recommend it. Um, I watched this weekend The Brain from Planet Eris. 50s John Agar movie where an evil brain from outer space um, invades his mind and gives him the power to blow up stock footage. It's awesome. It was a good one. And then tonight, maybe tonight or tomorrow, I have the Japanese 70s film House. I don't know if you guys are aware of this or if you've ever seen like the, uh, the trailer for it or... Uh, the poster with the crazy cat face. Um, this movie is insane in the membrane. So uh, I would definitely recommend checking it out. It's it's just beyond banana wacky, you guys. And you know I love wacky. Really? Koi? No, no book of Ready Player One? Yes, the book, uh, it's been out for years. I want to say like 2011 or 12, something like that. And uh, I, it's great. I like it. I like it better, I think, than the movie. Just because I do. I read the book uh, you know, years ago and have liked it since then. The movie does its own thing. It's a little bit different than the book, but they're both excellent, I feel. So highly would recommend that. Highly recommend seeking out and reading the book if you if you haven't already. So I'm just kind of slapping this here buttercup yellow in for these fins. I don't need to be super detailed with it, but just get in just get enough of it in there. Really, Jared? Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's good. I, like I said, I like it. As a as a pop culture junkie, it uh, man, it it does it for me. <laughs> Gamer spirit, how are you doing today, my friend? Good to see you. Glad you could make it, and welcome to the stream. We are doing little tiny sketch cards this week. And right now, I'm doing some from. Guillermo del Toro's The Shape of the Water. This is the, I don't think he has a name, uh, The Fish Man. Poor guy, no name. He looks like a Steve to me, though, so we're going to go with that. Are you still uh, in school, Gamer Spirit? Because uh, if so, I get, uh, you know, you got to focus on that, my man. So I, I get it, no worries. No worries. Hope everything is going well for you. Let me wipe these away. Not sure if you're going to make it Gamer Spirit, but I will be at Monster Bash again this year. And I am looking forward to that. Uh, 
Okay, he's kind of got the blue here. It's almost a little too much. I'm gonna tone that down. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Nile blue. School's going good, good man. I'm glad to hear it. I am glad to hear it. Okay, he's got these complicated designs on his forehead. So we're just going to have to do the best we can with them. Not get too overwhelmed. That should be good. Alright, good deal. And then I'm going to use this yellowish shade to get in in the face area. I'm looking forward to all the conventions coming up, you guys. Uh, I will start here coming up in May with the Three Rivers Comic Con uh, in Pittsburgh, of course. Um, that's a good one put on by New Dimension Comics. They're the guys I buy my comics from. And they've uh, always been good to me, so it's it's a great show uh, that's very comics focused, right? Rather than the 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 movie celebrity guests and stuff, it's very focused on like the comics scene, and I dig that. And it's just a great show, very friendly. People are nice. Um, can't recommend it enough. Uh, so that'll be in May. Then I'll be at Sci-Fi Valley Con again for the fourth year in a row in Altoona, Pennsylvania. That's a show I tend to drive a little bit for because it's a couple hours away from me. But uh, it's a nice, again, a nice show. Very focused on um, not so much the celebrities, but just like, I don't know, having a good time. And there's a lot of cosplay uh, it's a little more low key than, than some of the other big ones, but in a good way, like I, I can't recommend that one enough either. It's just a lot of fun. Everybody's there just having a good time, hanging out, having fun, doing pop culture stuff. There's like video game tournaments, stuff like that. Uh, so definitely good. That's sci-fi Valley Con. Then the monster bash. Hmm. You guys know I love a monster bash. That's the classic horror convention right here in my, uh, my, my town of Mars, PA. It's just down the road from me. And uh, it's a ton of fun. And they're going to have... Um, Joe Flaherty is going to be there. If you've ever seen Second City TV, or he's been in a million things. Have you ever seen Happy Gilmore? He's the guy that goes, you jackass, like the happy. Uh, but he was also um, on Second City and in the Ed, uh, Ed Brimley show, the cartoon. He was uh, the Count, Count Floyd, who'd come out of a coffin and howl like a werewolf because the joke was he was just the TV weatherman and they hired him on to be the uh, horror host. He doesn't know much about these movies. So that's awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing Count Floyd there. <coughs> Pardon me. But uh, it's going to be a good show. Yeah, Gamer Spirit, I, I totally understand, man. Especially, you know, where you're at now. Trust me, I get it. And then probably the Living Dead Fest will be in October, although I'm hoping that it's not at the same time as the October Monster Bash, because I don't want to have to pick and choose between those two conventions. Yeah, Freaks and Geeks, you got it, Jared. That's a show they should have done another season of, because it's awesome. Ooh, that wind out there is howling, you guys. I have my windows open because it's finally nice for once. And uh, 
Boy, howdy, I think I'm going to have to shut that. There's a Kennywood, a, a one-day comic convention at Kennywood Park. That's uh, Pittsburgh's local big amusement park. That's also held by New Dimension Comics. I think I'm, I might sign up for that because that was fun last year over Father's Day weekend. It's just one day, so that's Saturday. Koi, it is 3.21 p.m. where I am at. How about you? I hope it's not too, too late for you guys, wherever you are. Yep, 3.21 in the afternoon. Nice, nice and relaxing. Let's see, dark here. Oh, I got a flood of people in. Okay. Neon Lighter, 738 or 7338. How you doing today? Draw the galaxy? Yeah, sure. We could do that. Maybe we'll do that next. All right. Gamer Spirit, 321. You got it. Wicked Wonderland. Welcome to the stream. 421. Cool, cool. 921 for Koi. Man, you're, you're burning the candle at both ends. Kevin, ahoy hoy, my friend. Glad you could make it. A relaxing stream. <laughs> In here, I thought I was just the intense energy ball that would keep everyone awake at night. Welcome to the stream, everybody who's come, who's came in now. Kevin, I have not, and I really want to. I've been seeing ads for it left and right on the YouTubes and the Facebook books and whatever else. And uh, it looks great. I really want to check it out. It looks like Futurama mixed a little bit with maybe some Rick and Morty, all stuff I enjoy. But unfortunately, I just haven't had the time to get into it quite yet. Let's add in Fish Boy's eyeballs. All right, and let's get to the inking stage. Neon Lighter, do I curse? Uh, no, not really. I mean, in my personal life, yeah, I curse like a sailor who stubbed his toe. But uh, <laughs> on the stream, I try to keep it pretty, uh, pretty we'll say, PG-13. Kevin, I am not going as either a vendor or a um, person, as like a attendee, unfortunately. Um, we have a whole bunch of crap going on this weekend. Uh, family photos, someone I know uh, has an art opening here in Cranberry Saturday during the day. Sunday I'm playing D&D. &D. <laughs> so D&D &D takes precedence. But uh, I wish I could go. I mean, Alice Cooper's there. That's awesome. A uh, lot of cool stuff. Uh, unfortunately, the other thing, too, is I am broke as a joke. So there's no, no cash for autographs or merchandise. My budget for this month is, is blown. So I think that's where I'm at. How about you, man? Are you, are you heading out? To Steel City? Is there anybody that you're uh, you're hoping to meet? Or see, or stuff like that? Oh, cool, Neon Lighter. No problem. Yeah. Like I said, I, I like to keep it, uh, you know, family-friendly. I like everybody to be able to join in and not be, not be going too crazy. That's kind of, it's kind of off-putting a little bit, like when I, I go to a convention or whatever, and uh, speaking of the cursing, and I'll meet somebody there, like an artist, and I'll be like, hey, dude, I, I like your work, like, this is really cool, and they'll be like, F yeah, man, that's great, I'm like, whoa, like, uh, it, it's just really weird to me, because I always consider, like, when I'm at a convention, to be as professional as, as possible, 
you know, like if I, if I'm like friends with somebody, I don't mind like just going, uh, completely bananas in terms of the cursing department. But if somebody were to come up to my table or whatever, I, I would not do that unless, uh, you know, well, and then even if I knew them, why, why curse? What if somebody's in the vicinity and they overhear that and that turns them off from coming to my table and checking out my art, you know? So anyway, sorry, little rant about swear words. I <laughs> hope you guys don't mind. The Funko Hunt. Mm. Can't beat that, man. That's awesome. I uh, just picked up Ellen Ripley. I know she's nothing special, but uh, since Toys R Us is going out of business, they're starting to lower their prices, so I picked up Ripley. I was super happy about that. And I've been on the hunt for the older, like, Universal Monsters and stuff like that. They're, the Universal Monsters are hard to find. I think I'm going to get some Ready Player One Pops. I did get the Ready Player One Keys, though. The uh, the the keys put out by Funko, which is pretty pretty freaking cool. Uh, do I have an Xbox? I have the, uh, the Xbox 360. I don't have the Xbox One, unfortunately. Most of my gaming that I've been doing lately has been on the PC... Where, uh, <laughs> oh God, what is the name of this game? Hang on one second. I got to bring this up. Give me, give me two shakes. It's barely a game. Doki Doki Literature Club. <laughs> I've been playing that a little bit. Oxen Free, which has been great. The Forest is good. You know, as always, I always talk about the dang forest though, so. And then uh, on the Wii, I've been checking, I've been hunting down for this. And I want to get it at like a really good price, which is part of the issue why I haven't gotten it yet. But the uh, Godzilla Unleashed, the Godzilla fighting game where you can be like all the different monsters. Apparently it had a PlayStation 2 release um, where you can be Batra. But that's like the only thing that's missing from the, uh, the Wii release. So, I'm okay with not being Batra. You know, the, the Wii one has Godzilla 54 in it, which is like a must. All the cool dudes. Gotta love it. So, okay, hold on. Oxen Free is fantastic. Gamer Spirit, I hear you. I'm still working through it. It's great. Uh, Chrono Toys, Kevin, where is that at? I need to check that out. Are they online or are they a physical store? Neon Lighter Batra is an evil Mothra. So, like, if Mothra is the defender of the Earth, then Batra's like the destroyer of the Earth. Kind of a mythical thing. And, uh, yeah, it's called Batra. It's a giant, like, bat thing that flies around. And, uh, it's cool. It was only in one movie. But, so I'm okay with that not being in that game considering you get, like, 20-some other monsters. Gamer Spirit, yes, Godzilla fighting game. Uh, the PlayStation 2 one has Batra. The, uh, the Wii version does not. But the Wii version has, I think, like, 10 more characters than the PlayStation 2 version. So that's where I'm at with that. <laughs> I hope I answered all of your questions, you guys. Um, yeah, check it out. It's called on the Wii Godzilla Unleashed. Check out the roster. It's pretty. It's pretty awesome. The only problem is you have to use the dumb Wii um, motion controls. Like you just can't press A to attack. You have to like flip the controller around, which I kind of hate. But to get all those characters, I I don't mind doing that. We watched Godzilla movies this weekend. Uh, some of our friends were out from Ohio. And I watched uh, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, the one from the 90s with the time traveling, where they go back in time, and in order to stop Godzilla from rampaging, these aliens from the future come to the 90s, then they go back to the 40s, 
to kill the dinosaur that would eventually become Godzilla, but they replace Godzilla with their own little baby Ghidorahs. <laughs> and then the Ghidorahs back in the 90s now have turned into King Ghidorah, and they can control it with like from their spaceship time machine. So then some of the good people have to hijack a smaller time machine and they go back in time and they kidnap the dinosaur that would become Godzilla before he becomes Godzilla. And then they irradiate him with the radiation from a nuclear sub, which turns him into Godzilla, who then fights King Ghidorah and wins, which you'd think is good. But now Godzilla's on the loose and they're like, oh, crap. So then they get in the time machine and go to the future where they find Ghidorah's corpse and they turn Ghidorah into Mecha King Ghidorah and then bring him back from the past or from the future into the 90s so uh, Mecha King Ghidorah can fight Godzilla. So if you can follow that, it's awesome and you guys should totally check that movie out. And then we watched... Godzilla uh, Final Wars, the 50th anniversary movie from 2004. That is maybe one of my favorites of all time with all the cameos. He fights like every monster in the franchise. They're just little fights, but they're still awesome. So check those two out, guys. Gamer Spirit is pretty good. Kevin, yeah, they, they have a couple. There's I think there's one on GameCube and on, like, PS2 and the original Xbox and stuff like that. So they're, they're all over the place. But Godzilla fighting games are... That's, that's awesome. I was sad to hear that the 2014 Godzilla fighting game, or the Godzilla game, uh, was really, really bad. Because I was hoping that would be great. I have not played it myself, but from everything I heard, I probably shouldn't play it. As it's as it's supposedly pretty lousy, but I don't know. Alright, let's get Fish Boy's little scale things in here. Okay, there we go. And like, uh, like on last week's episode, I'm just keeping them pretty loosey-goosey here. Speaking of Shape of the Water and Funko Pops, I need to get this guy's Funko Pop, because it's, it's actually really cool. The one where he's coming out of the water, it's like a, a variant. It's pretty neat. It's good stuff. Okay, and then he's got, like, armored scale things here. Let me do that. And then he's got his cool, like, I don't know what you call them, healing fin things. All right, we're getting down to the wire with this guy. Let's just start wrapping him up. Want to add just a little more blue into them. Over in there. That's good, like that. It's a little extra color just to pop them out a bit. I don't know how accurate this is, but uh, I don't know. It looks kind of like them, right? I'll take kind of like them. Okay. And then we gotta sign them up. And where's my white paint pen? One second, you guys. All right, white paint pen. Brian Main, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, Shape of Water, I would recommend it. I like it. It's, uh, I'm so glad it won the Academy Award, too, over something boring. I'm glad a movie where a woman falls in love with a fish monster, 
uh, won the Academy Award this year. That makes me so happy. But definitely check it out. It's a good one. Kevin, I, I know, right? I love Angry Video Game Nerd. Uh, that game wasn't very good. If you're into creepypastas, though, the, uh, the, what is it, the, like, NES Godzilla creepypasta is actually pretty good. I, I'm not a huge creepypasta guy, and I'd recommend that one. Speaking of the NES Godzilla, I have had this on my shelf for a while. And might as well show it off here because I'm wrapping this guy up. Let's wrap him up, then I'll show you. Okie dokie. So there we go. There's our Shape of the Water fish man. Uh, he looks like a Steve, I think. that They never name him in the movies. I'm going to call him Steve. He fits in with our last week's selection of Jason, Leatherface, the Predator, and Fishman. All right. Next up, I think I said I am doing uh, the the Galaxy, right? For Neon Lighter, is that right? The Galaxy or the Universe? Hey, no problem, Gamer Spirit. I trust me, man. I get it. I I get it completely. If it's if it's not your bag. I, uh, I completely understand that. Uh, one of the things with it is, is that for me, seeing like a very serious take on like Creature from the Black Lagoon was just really good. But it's not the, it's not the most entertaining movie. It's not like I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to watch this over and over. Like, I don't know, Conan the Barbarian or something. So I get where any, anybody's coming from. Let's pop out one of these bad boys. Oh, and I have to show you my Godzilla. This is... I love this thing. Come here, you. This is the uh, NES Godzilla <laughs> action figure. It's got the... I can't show it all here. Um, but yeah, it's like the NES box. And then he's colored like the NES Godzilla. He's a little hard to see. But that's, that's the NES Godzilla coloring in there. He's freaking cool. I love it. Godzilla, monster of monsters. It's good stuff. Anyway. You guys know me. I love showing off my random, like, just stuff that I have sitting around. Um, okay. I know, the Nika Toys thing, they're great. I, I really, I'm chomping at the bit. I really want to get the flipping uh, NES Jason and on a minor level, the NES Freddy. But the NES Jason is like, mm, oh, I want that so bad. Okay, the, the Galaxy. Are you talking the Milky Way Galaxy? I think you are, the one we're currently in. Spiral Galaxy. Uh, quick pop quiz, hot shots, without looking it up. What is the next nearest galaxy to our own? First person to tell me wins nothing. Don't look it up. I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. It was in a Star original Star Trek episode that was a two-parter. Galaxies are a lot of fun to do, I have to say, in, um, like, paint, like uh, oil paint or whatever. And as far as our sketch goes, that's it. Looks like an eyeball, but there we go. Gamer Spirit and Kevin, you guys both win nothing. It is the Andromeda Galaxy. Our closest neighbor, we would have to uh, cross the interstellar void which at our current rate of speed would take like billions of years. <laughs> Actually, it would take a while. Hold on one second. OK, 
because now I need to know because I, I used to know this damn it the Andromeda galaxy from us is 2.537 million light years so uh, that's that's a way yep gamer spirit you get nothing my friend a big wad of zero so enjoy it from me to you my friend all right, let's make our galaxy kind of fun and colorful. I'm going to start with deep reddish blue for the corners here. Because basically we have uh, light in the middle here of the galaxy. And so the edges are going to be dark. And as we get closer, it lightens up just a bit. 2.573 million light years. Pretty far, guys. That's the um, a light year is the amount of time or the yeah, the amount of distance light can cover in one year. And as we all know, light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Then I'm going to go in with this blue violet here on the edges. We'll kind of keep things dark. I dig it. So 186,000 miles per second. There are 60 seconds in a minute. Let's get out the calculator. So 186,000 times 60 means that that's 11,160,000 miles per minute. So then the, that times 60, that's hours. So 669,600,000 miles in an hour. And then we're going to times that by 24 is, uh, what is that, 16 billion, and we're going to times it by 365, so that's 5 trillion, 865 billion and change miles in a year that light can travel, yeah, so as you can see, it's kind of far out there. I don't know. This this uh, this episode brought to you by math. Move over holes, math. Jared, you're on the board, my friend. Hannibal Lecter is coming up next. Now I need you to think. Do you want Hannibal with the mask, Anthony Hopkins style? Do you want him like with blood coming out of his mouth? Do you want uh, the Mads Mickelson Hannibal from the TV show, which I love. Uh, you tell me. Okay, so I'm going to go in with some warm grays here. Just try to get in. Again, some of this here. Let's get rocking and rolling on this galaxy. Sorry, guys. I went on a math tangent, which it can happen. Um... Maybe not math so much as a space tangent. I love outer space. It's where all my favorite aliens are from. So we're just keeping it dark near the outside. And as we move towards the middle, it's going to get lighter. Uh, what color do we want our galaxy to be? Considering it can be pretty much any color, you know. Nice gamer spirit, the sun. Yep, it's, it's fractionally far away. That's why the sun's light only takes eight minutes to travel here. We can do our galaxy kind of bluish. Greenish, blue-green, maybe? Stick with our blue-green shape of the water theme.
Hey, Bee Killer, how you doing? Good to see you, and welcome to the stream. The good math. <laughs> Not that bad math. Ugh. Walter White out in the desert in his skivvies making blue crystal math. But seriously, you guys, space is the place, man. Jared, you think about it, and uh, you let me know, man, because I'm, I'm down with whatever. Hannibal Lecter, I love it. Uh, gotta ask, you fan, do you, do you like the, or does anybody like the Hannibal TV show that was on a while back? Because I dug it like a garden. Um I don't know. I love that it was so flippin' extreme for network TV. Like, I've never seen that much gore on just, like, NBC. <laughs> it was great. Space is dope. Agreed. Freak it. Yep. Neon lighter. I agree. You're a meteorologist. Cool. That's awesome. Space, man. The final frontier. I love it. Do you guys remember uh, just a while back, uh, a couple of years ago, we had that, like, uh, the flybys of, uh, like, Pluto and just those getting those high-res photographs? That's awesome. That's good stuff. I love looking at that, like back in the 70s when they did the uh, flyby of Saturn. And I, I I cannot remember, was it Cassini Space Station or the, the satellite? I cannot remember off the top of my head. But just, I don't know, just looking at that, it's, am it's so amazing. Like I always use space as like, when I'm feeling down about humanity's accomplishments, I look at our ability to have like, I don't know, math the crap out of this to get ourselves to these places, you know? Like trying to, trying to get a satellite near Pluto. You have to launch it nine years in advance and you have to math out just where Pluto is going to be in nine years to a degree of accuracy, which I don't get in my normal life with anything, you know? And, and we as a species were able to, like, do that. That's inspiring to me for reasons. All right, let's add in some of this awesome grayish violet. Space is the place. Hey, who here likes deep purple song Space Truckin'? I do. Let's go space trucking. Come on. <laughs> Good times. Oh, this grayish violet is running low. Mm. Come on, baby. You can you can do it. I'll put your ink for me. Come. Come on. Actually, it being dry might be to my effect in, or to my benefit in some ways here because I can do like a use it for lighter tones near the middle here. Good deal. Space Trucking. Do you guys remember that movie, Space Truckers? Pepperidge Farm remembers. And so do I. I think it had Dennis Hopper in it, right? It was like a B. Roger Corman movie from the 90s about space trucker. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. There were truckers in space. They get kidnapped by space trucking cyborgs. 
Anyone? Bueller. Bueller. Let's add some like cool reds into there. Just get some colors popping out, man. Space. Let's make it colorful, right? Light Rouge. Let's do just a little bit of this light tea rose here in the middle. Start slapping it in, slapping it in, guys. Okay, let's see here. Yep, Gamer Spirit, you know it. <laughs> Jared, I think you might be right. I think you might be right. And the cyborgs have three red eyes. Ah, I can't. Man, it's been forever since I have seen that. You know what that means. I'm going to have to watch it now. <laughs> I think the cyborgs did have three eyes, like three red eyes in that movie. I think you might be right. Let's go, space trucking. All right, and I kind of want to darken around here just a little more with some blue. I'm going to use Antwerp blue. Here, just to get some like popping blues. Popping blues. Let's do it. And then, I don't know, I think I want to darken that sky, the, well, the space, a little more. Use this nice agate. It's great color for, like, night skies. Just kind of. Throw it in. Leave that edge a little messy, and then we can go over it with some stuff to kind of blur it just a pinch. Let's go, space truck in. There we go. Let's get that in there. Okay, that's a little better. And then let's blend it in with some light. How about the blue 45, maybe? I don't know. I'm just grabbing colors willy-nilly at this point, you guys. If it works, it works. Throw it at a wall, see what sticks. Oh, yeah, neon lighter. Yep, I agree completely with the... I'm not going to make them like little stars like that. Okay. I wouldn't do that. All right, so I can start to add in just little dabs of black here. Keep it pretty. So I'm going to go a little bigger with this. The new popular Bob Ross oil paint. Poppin' blue! <laughs> That's Gamer Spear. That's coming from my line of my upcoming new line. Look for it in stores. Uh, break dancing oil paints. Popping and locking blue, baby. Coming to a store near you. Instead of like a canvas or, or a cloth, drop cloth that you put down underneath of your feet, it's like a crappy piece of cardboard with masking tape holding it together. And you, you paint on top of that. <laughs> Spill a little like a handful of sand on it for traction. There we go. 
just some texture in there. Break dancing oil paints, guys. It's going to be so good. Okay, let's see here. <laughs> All right, stars time. And I'm just, again, popping them in. Just different sizes are good. I'm not going to try to get any specific constellations in there. Because I don't know how accurate that is. I, I don't know if certain constellations are from different galaxies or from our own Milky Way. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's really hard, I find, to not just be doing, like, when you're a human and you're drawing, you naturally just want to lay down, like, patterns and stuff. And that's not necessarily good. There we go. You know, like it's hard to get truly like random looking stars in. But I'm trying my best. Brian Main, yeah, these, these jelly roll pens are like uh, for doing this kind of work, like marker work, they're, they're like a godsend. They're, they're so opaque. I've gone through so many pens that are like thin as all get out. And these just, they, they cover so nice without it being like acrylic paint, which is the other old standby. Boom, boom, boom. Get her in there. There we go. Okay. Uh, neon lighter, uh, wake, make a hard drawing for us that we will know until they end. Huh? That's hard. I think it might've hit that a couple more times than you wanted, but that's okay. Uh, what, what do you say? Do do a drawing that's like really hard. I don't know. How about we make the Hannibal Lecter hard? All right, guys, there we go. A little portrait of everybody's home sweet home, the Milky Way Galaxy. With all the stars in it. We live about uh, here on the, on the end of a spiral arm. Uh, so let me sign her up. There we go. So we got Fish Boy. We've got the Milky Way. 18 plus stream B killer. I don't know, man. Maybe one day I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do Colin's adults only stream. Or no, Colin after dark. It's going to be great, you guys. But I'm not going to draw anything that's actually like, uh, like I'm going to draw things that are for adults only, but not in the way you think. Like uh, you think it's going to be, oh, adults only equals sexy times. Nope. It's going to be adults only equals like tax law. Something that anybody under 18 doesn't care about. Actually, most people over 18 don't care about it. Adult themes, refinancing your mortgage. <laughs> Adult themes, filling out a forwarding, a mail forwarding address sheet, form 1028B, ah, Colin, after dark. <laughs> it's going to be so good, you guys. I'm going to get no views, and it's going to be great. All right, Jared, it's crunch time, buddy. Hannibal Lecter, uh, mask, uh, prison whites covered in blood, 
we're good either way. Covered in blood. We live in America, so covered in blood is not an adults only theme, apparently. <laughs> so you let me know what you want. Yep, bills, exactly. Paying your water bill. Filing. <laughs> filing a ta income tax extension. <laughs> Can do. Can do. I always wonder how he got that dude in the elevator. Like, up, up above the elevator. Another underused Hannibal Lecter, uh, like, shot is the one at the end where he's in, like, the white suit and the white Panama hat. That's a good one. Okay, I'm going to do my best here with this. And once again, we're going to start off with circles. So let's get into that. Neon lighter, hard drawing. Uh, we're we're doing it, man. I don't know what you're what you're wanting more than that. Okay. Hannibal Lecter. Did you ever wonder what the tastiest part of the human body would be? Does anybody wonder that? I do sometimes. Like, if I was to go full cannibal, like, what, uh, what would, what would be the tastiest part, you know? I don't think it would be something you'd think. You know? I bet you it would be, like, the human eyeball. Like a delicate little orb of deliciousness. He does work fast, Jared. <laughs> The ear bee killer? Yeah, exa exactly. You're like, mmm, them ears. So good. And then you have to seek out someone with huge ears to eat, like Ross Perot. Topical. All right, Hannibal. Sir Anthony Hopkins. So good. He played a great Titus Andronicus. The cheeks, yep. The the finger, the eye, the lip, yeah. Mmm, delicious. Uh Aiden Freeman. Alright, cool man. Thank you for thank you for sharing. Uh my real name is Colin. <laughs> Colin Richards. So there you go. Cool, man. Okay, so let's have Sir Anthony here. Covered in the blood. And I hope I make it look like him. I, I think that's hard for me to do without, like, really getting into the nitty-gritty. I know there's a lot of guys that can do the... Um, uh, like caricatures real easy. Like they make it look like the person, like super simple. But me, I don't, I'm not that good at that on the fly at least. Uh, have you ever bit your finger? Yeah, the finger. Fair enough. <laughs> Let's make Hannibal kind of smiling. Maybe not that much, but a little bit. Like, he's happy to be busting out of prison and eating people. You know, let's get a picture of Anthony Hopkins smiling here as Hannibal. Because I think that's going to be important. 
Just not a picture from that scene. Here's a picture of him smiling in his uh, prison cell. There we go. And then he's got the hair here. All righty. Up there is hair. Got a big old forehead. Uh, he's got the smile lines here. Underneath. Tend to, I have a tendency to make have people have really wide noses, too. I've noticed that, and I don't know why. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm, like, concentrating here. Uh, do I have glasses? I do, Neon Lighter. I do have... I do indeed wear glasses. Used to wear contacts. It's been a while. And that's good. A little thinner on the face, too. That's not too bad. There we go. And neck. I don't know if this looks like Hannibal or not, you guys. I'm trying my best here based on what I see. Right, I've seen... Uh, I liked Red Dragon. Enough. I mean, I, I think when it comes to these movies, like Silence of the Lambs, it, it almost like peaked too early. Like, it's so good that any of the other Hannibal movies can't quite live up to that. But... Red Dragon's pretty good. Hannibal's okay. Even Hannibal Rising, I didn't hate it or anything. I don't know, guys. Does this look enough like Hannibal? I don't know. Let's get into it. With that. Neon Lighter, I think I think everybody got the picture, man. So you can uh we're good. I appreciate I appreciate the feedback about the pants and the hard drawing, but uh let's move on today. Shall we? We're having a nice discussion about cannibalism. I don't know, you guys. This... Ah, mm. All right, I'm just going to go for it. You know, it's one of those things where I can spend all day trying to get the pencil drawing just right of Hannibal. Um, we're just going to have to get into it. And he's got those shaded eyes. There we go. And underneath here as well. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, the chat is going crazy. Um, hmm. All right. Neon Lighter, uh, how about you stop doing the crazy spam things? Uh, I, I appreciate the feedback and all that. I appreciate you joining in, but uh, I don't want to have to kick you out, man. So I think it's being disrupt, distru, bleh, disruptive to the other people in the chat. So 
That I can't abide by. So please curtail it. And that will make me happy. Okay. Hannibal is there. He's got the blood. And the reddish. Let's do that. There we go. Hey, Light, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Yep. That's how it goes, man. So, we shall see. All right. I need my skin colors. Milky white we're going to use. And Hannibal's got kind of a reddish. The blood will, of course, go in last as always because that just kind of sits on top. Let me get some of this pencil erased. How are you doing today, Light? We were discussing Godzilla movies earlier. <laughs> Good times. Good times. Go, just kind of throw that in where it needs to be. Yeah, I think I'm going to pull this off. Jared, I, I don't know, buddy. I've tried my best here with Sir Anthony Hopkins. We shall see. But... Hopefully, with any luck, I can pull off a decent looking Hopkins. Light, I hear you, man. I got my windows open right now. Any on lighter, no problem. I un I I understand. That that's fair enough. All right, let's get some cool grays for the hair. Yeah, it's supposed to be 70s here tomorrow. I don't know what to do with my, <laughs> myself. It's, that's like almost too nice. Mm. Yeah, get in there over these shaded eyelids here. And now it's just kind of adding in these things. And he has stubble-ish, right? I think he does. Eighties, nice. Thank you, Jared. Also start thinking about what you want for the background. I was thinking about doing like a bars type deal. Not really like anything specific, but, um, you know, just like colored in red and then maybe some little bit of darker red bars in the back look like prism bars. Bee killer sounds good, man. All right, let's see here. It's got kind of a, a reddish. Uh, that's almost too much there. That's okay. That's okay, it happens. All right, a little too red. That's all right. Let's get down. That's red O2. I thought that would be enough. Um, oh, no problem, B Killer. No problem. No worries. This is called Pinkish Vanilla.
Sounds good to you? Good deal. Neon Lighter? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's just a little too late. We're doing the Hannibal Lecter bars back there. I think it's going to turn out pretty cool. Okay, and yellow shreds, zero, 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 quad zero to fill in some of this. We're getting there, guys. Dr. Hannibal Lecter, my favorite therapist. I love how he gives people bad therapy. It just makes me happy. <laughs> I don't, it's not like he's got a ton of stubble, but you know what? Let me bring up a picture. No, you're right. His face is as smooth as a baby's bum. So we got to go with, we got to go with that. And he's got kind of sandy colored hair. Not grayish. What am I, what am I thinking? Now, what color are Sir Anthony Hopkins' eyes? They're green? They're blue-green, it looks like, in this giant close-up of his creepy freaking face. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm going to start doing the background then here <laughs> light bringer you are the watcher of this stream <laughs> good deal or you at least report to the watchers so awesome man well thanks for stopping by i i greatly appreciate it and uh we'll see you man or you could or your or if you're not leaving right now you could stay around i i realize i just jumped to an assumption there and i shouldn't have my apologies But the point still stands. Thanks for joining in. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, on the I love on the TV show that they get in more to that. That he that kid is like, I have visions of tearing people apart with my giant sharp teeth. And Hannibal's like, let's explore this and convince the kid to make a suit with a cave bear skull in it that he can rip people apart at parks. It's good doctrine right there, man. Good doctrine right there. Boom. Hello, cuddies. <laughs> so good. Let's add some of this nice peach color. I like that episode too. Well, it was an arc where Hannibal became friends-ish with the guy who was killing people and turning their guts into uh, human gut strings for musical instruments and sold them to the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra for like a decade. Good times. Good times indeed. Neon lighter. Yes, yes, because then you flip it over and it says, hello. Good deal. All right, with any luck, I can get some straight lines in here. I wonder if they're like actual therapists watch Hannibal and they get a little bit of like wish fulfillment. Like, God, I wish I could give my patients terrible advice about killing people. <laughs> Let's see. 
And then we should put in like these, the cross beams. Good enough. And then the white shirt. White is so hard to shade. Mm. Well, let's do it, you guys. Fortune favors the bold, right? We're going to use warm grays for that. And I'm out of warm gray one. Awesome. Warm gray two. Let's do it. You're up, buddy. Warm gray two. I'm calling you in, bro. Mm -mm, pardon me. Okay. Sorry, I'm like so concentrating on this. I'm like ignoring you guys. I'm sorry. I have to wonder too, like, so whatever university Hannibal got his um, degrees from, right? Do you wonder if they still, like, if they're like, ah, oh, crap. One of our alumni up and ate a bunch of people. Now we're going to have to do something about that. We're going to have to, like, take his name off the uh, alumni list. You know, whose job is that in the world that they're like, crap? Like, gosh, gosh dang it, Hannibal. Okay, uh, let's get in with the markers and do this thing. I'm going to switch back to the point three. And let's handle it up, you guys. Uh, as far as I can tell, his eye color is kind of a bluish green. It probably doesn't show up on the camera at all here. When I start filling it in, uh, you should be able to see it better. feel bad about adding so much gray into his hair. I thought for sure his hair was gray, but maybe I'm thinking like the older, more distinguished Anthony Hopkins of now rather than the Hannibal era of the 90s. Anthony Hopkins, if you're watching this right now, which I'm sure you are, please forgive me for making your hair too gray. All right, am I still within frame here? Let me see. Let me switch back. Boom. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. All right, where are we? Ya -ta -ta -ta, da -ta 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 -ta. I like, too, in uh, Hannibal, when he um, scoops that dude's brain out, like he opens up his head at the end. I thought that was pretty good. I actually liked Hannibal more or less. Not my not my favorite. I think, like I said before, Silence of the Lambs like almost like peaked too big. It was so good right off the bat that it's like anything else is just it's never gonna live up to it. But Hannibal was pretty good. Let's play a game, you guys. Uh, name a cannibal movie. And you can't have named the movie that somebody else has already listed. So, like, if you name Silence of the Lambs, that's off. Let's just go until we get all the cannibal movies. Neon Lighter, thanks for joining in. Take care. And uh, same with you, Bee Killer. Take care, both of you guys. And uh, thanks. And we'll see you on the next one, hopefully. So name some cannibal movies. I will start. 
Oh well, no, I won't start. I don't want to do Silence of the Lambs. That's every, that's that's what we're just doing. So let's go with the movie Ravenous. We're going to start with Ravenous. And Anthony Hopkins was awesome in Westworld. Can't wait for the next season, but uh, it's going to be sad that he's not going to be in it, I don't think. Motel Hell takes all kind of critters to make Farmer Vincent's fritters. Jared Johnson, super high five. Love it. A while back, I went to the Oaks Theater in Oakmont. This was years ago at this point. And they had a showing of Motel Hell, and it's uh, the 35 millimeter. Raw. Nice. Thank you, Neon Lighter. Way to get in there and make those eyes even a little bit darker, too. Farmer Vincent. He's a class act. That's Rory Calhoun. I love that movie. I still have it on VHS tape, like that I recorded off of TV. <laughs> the Green Inferno, that's a good one. Oh, an Arrow release of Motel. Oh, I'll have to check that out. I have the uh, the old Midnight Movies release of it. It's on like the double bill with Deranged. I'll have to check out there. I knew I knew what you meant, Neon Lighter. Eli Roth's new movie with the Cannibals. That's a good pick, because you could get into the whole subgenre of. Um, jungle cannibal movies like uh, Cannibal Holocaust, Cannibal Ferrix, uh, all that kind of stuff. Okay, Sir Anthony, let's keep going. Me and Sir Anthony. We're doing this thing. Okay, I don't know about the nose there, but that's it's not terrible. That's a little that's just a little better for me for my taste. I'm gonna get back in there and do that. Uh, wrong turn, good call. Yep, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, good deal. Brian Payne, yep, he had to prove that the uh, the actors were you know still alive and hadn't been killed. Manhunter, yep. There's our there's our pal Doctor Lecter once again, rearing his delightful head. Giving him almost a joker smile here. I don't know if it works, but that's just how it kind of came out. So <laughs> it's just going to run with it at this point. I don't know how much it looks like Anthony Hopkins, but that's that's okay. His mouth is a little too far from his nose for my taste. But we're doing it, man. We've got to finish this sucker up. We're doing it. Blood Feast. Neon Lighter. Good call. We already said Mohel Tell Devil Hunter. Hmm. I'm not familiar with that. Welcome to the Jungle. That's not the one with Jonathan Taylor Thomas in it. Because that if that has cannibalism, that would be awesome.
The Jonathan Taylor Thomas cannibalism movie. Yep, I'd watch that in a heartbeat. Or am I thinking John Disney's Jungle to Jungle? I think I'm thinking Disney's Jungle to Jungle. This scene in um, Silence of the Lambs where he breaks out was actually filmed in Pittsburgh at the Soldiers and Sailors Monument in Oakland, which is where the Art Institute would usually have their graduation ceremonies. I didn't think the movie Eaten Alive has cannibalism, oddly enough. Okay, let me see if I can get this a little more Anthony Hopkins y here. I don't like the teeth that are right up against each other. Let's do that. Okay, so let's see if a little more shading and some blood will help sell the Hopkins y fried green tomatoes. <laughs> Excellent pick, my friend. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's hilarious. Some more shading around here, I think, will help get this a little more Hopkinsy. Oh, and that's leaking. Damn. Oh, great. Good. Good. Right at the end. Sweeney Todd. Good pick. Man from Deep River. Good deal. You guys are cannibal fiends. I love it. Now, should we count movies like Rob Zombie's 31, where there's unintentional cannibalism. I guess we could count movies like Alive, but I kind of don't want to. Because <laughs> that's based on a true story, which is, that's pretty terrible. I saw a movie called Donner Pass re recently, which was about the Donner Party. Uh, kind of. It kind of had cannibalism in it. Kind of, maybe sort of, a little bit. And comedy, you got to see Cannibal the Musical then. All right, let's get in with this blood here, you guys. So I'm just doing kind of an undercoating here of Cardinal, and we'll go in with some different colors as well. good because blood has a bunch of different colors rocky horror yep science fiction double feature might be one of like my favorite songs of all time just for all the references in it and such i love it science fiction double feature Dr. X will build a creature. I want to see androids fighting Brad and Janet.
All right, and then I'm going to need something a little lighter than this to go. So let's try this lipstick orange here. That's okay. We'll just cover his face all up in blood. Hannibal Lecter is a cool guy and he's got good eating habits. Oh, the shot—the shining doesn't have cannibalism in it. I don't think there's any sh any cannibalism in there. At least not that I can think of. Okay, there we go for that. All right, what do you guys think? Does it look wonky? Does it need something? What What are you thinking for this Hannibal here? I don't know if it looks good or I'm going to sign it up anyway. What do you guys think? Does it need, does it need something? I don't know what, I man, I'm terrible at making people look like they're actual people. It bugs me. It bugs me, you guys. Did you ever see The Return of Dr. X with Humphrey Bogart? That's a good one. Humphrey Bogart's only mad scientist role. And he was cool as a cucumber in it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me go in with a white paint. Let me make his eyes a little bit darker, because his eyes are darker. Background wonky. Okay, what's... Um, hmm. I agree. Let me try something here. The crease in his forehead. Uh, where's that at in his forehead? I don't see it here. Let me see if I can get a better picture of his forehead. And there goes my phone. Um, yeah, is it like over here? It's kind of like a, like a divot. You can add that in. We can add that in. And the background, let's see here. We got a warm gray, number five. Let me do it like this. I think this will help a bit. But at the end of the day, too, I don't want to spend forever and a day on this thing, so. Eventually, I'm just going to have to be like, oh, that, that's it. Well, let me see what I can do here with this. Yeah, I see what you, I see what you mean, man. It's weird that that's in there. It's kind of like, uh, you ever notice that thing on Jean-Claude Van Damme's forehead? It's kind of like that. There we go.
And then let me do, let me see here. Let me check here, the chat too. Yeah, the background is just not going to be anything spectacular. There's not going to be anything behind there. It's just like a color. But uh, is it outside or inside? Well, it's supposed to, it doesn't really matter. It's just a quickie, but it's supposed to be inside. Just the red in there is just more of a, more of a color, kind of like the Jason would have or the Leatherface. Just a random color. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I think I'm going to call it quits on Hannibal here. Just because I could work on this thing all day, but at that point, then it's like... I don't, know. I, don't, I don't know how much it can get better, is I guess what I'm going for. Let me add in some white for the highlights. And up here in the hair, too, we'll add in some some light color not the best but there we go Jared <laughs> his forehead wrinkles made a v-shape see those are the types of things that I need to look out for um, what's the word I'm looking for that I need to look out for uh, you know what I mean to, to do pictures of people like on the quick like that's what um, caricaturists do and I just I don't like see that I don't know why it's weird but that's something I can practice on Okay, and I don't know if we have time for another full one, but I can always get started on something, and I will do, I would do Freddy, actually, Neon Lighter, because that's what I initially was going to start with today, to go with the Jason and Leatherface. So let's take a look at all these guys, all side by side. Let's see what we got. We got Jason, we got... Leatherface and the colors do not look good on this camera. Predator, like that Predator green is intense when I'm watching it. Uh, Fish Boy named Ralph and Dr. Hannibal Lecter, and of course the Milky Way Galaxy. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Uh, what design of Freddy do you guys want to see? Because I'll start working on it now. And maybe we'll either pick it up next week or I'll finish it and throw it on my Facebook. But we got 15 minutes so we can get some Freddy action at least started. What do you guys want to see? Regular Freddy? The NES Freddy? The Wes Craven's New Nightmare? I wear a hat Freddy because... Or a trench coat? Oh. Mm. But yeah, Jared, my, my pleasure, my friend, my pleasure. I haven't drawn Freddy in a while. I'm going to nix the new Freddy from the, um, the Jackie Earl Haley Freddy from the remake. If you like it, that's cool, but I definitely, since I'm going to be trying to sell these things to conventions, I definitely want classic Freddy, more or less. Five Nights of Freddy, Freddy. Uh, no, I don't know there. <laughs> Neon Lighter. I would do Five Nights at Freddy, but let's do Kruger. Elm Street 2. Brian sold. I like Nightmare 2. I know a lot of people give it crap, but I dig it. Okay. Let's see here. All right, we can get this thing started. I now have the Elm Street music that dun, 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 like in my head. So that's cool. 
Oh, and hang on real quick. There we go. Sorry, my laptop was about to die. I want to be able to get the glove in there, but man, this is such a small space. How about we do... Hmm. Bopity beep bop. Da, da. Maybe we'll do Freddy Fazbear next time, because I would like to do a Five Nights at Freddy's thing. And that would be a good one to do on these little cards. Oh, God. You know, I love horror movies, but that is too frightening even for me. Okay, so we're getting in Freddy and his hat. It looks like on the Elm Street 2, he's got like a ripped ear. Let's have him kind of like Hannibal looking down at you, the viewer. And I'll refine this, of course, because it's just going in quick. Reagan's a good pick. That's one I've never done, a drawing of the exorcist. I don't know, what do you guys think about Elm Street 2 as a movie? I know a lot of people hate it. I have no problems with Elm Street 2. I actually, I actually dig it. I liked it when I was a teenager. I like it now. Discuss. Kevin Yeager designed him to look like a male witch. You know what? In looking at this picture of his face from part two, I can actually see that. Like that makes that makes a ton of sense. I never knew that. That's interesting. Thank you. It really was. <laughs> Jared, it was great. I love the, I love like the school bus parts in the beginning and the end, like the whole movie is just good. Uh, if I may say so, that redheaded chick was pretty darn hot too. Uh, can never remember the actress's name, but I like her. So that's always a plus too. Yeah, Brian, I agree. It's not, it's not perfect. I don't know. I think it's very underrated is, I guess, more of like what I'm um, getting at with that. Like, I just like it, but I know a lot of people don't, and I, I don't understand why there's like hatred for it. That's That's maybe what I don't get more than anything. is why the Elm Street hate. There's a lot of horror movies out there that people just, they hate on, and I, I just don't get it, you know? We'll see you, Gamer Spirit. I'm about to wrap up here in 10 minutes anyway, so thank you for joining in, my friends, and hope to see you on the next one, or at some other time. It's all good, man. He's got a big old year there. Ooh, I need to fix that.
So let's get this pencil drawing in real nice. And then that'll be it before I start in with the coloring because I do have to run at five exacto mundo today. So don't want that ear nearly as big. I wonder if um, um, Robert Englund like kept any of the gloves or masks or you know any of the props from the movies. Or if, like, he didn't know it was a big deal at first, and by the time it became a big deal, they would have a tight grip on all the props. Let's see. I wonder. I always wonder about that. As an actor, like, I'd love to keep the props from the movie that I'm in. That would be so cool, man. To end up with like a, a Freddy glove or just something from the movie you work on. I think that would be cool as heck. But I know a lot of the studios, like that stuff doesn't belong to you. It belongs to essentially the producers of the movie. Man, I'd love to get some of that stuff. At a Monster Bash, I've seen a number of props from movies I love. Like, I've seen the actual The Blob, which was awesome. Um, stuff from Forbidden Planet, a couple things from Planet of the Apes. Just cool as heck, you know. Okay, so that's coming along there i just i don't know it's so cool that we have all these movies you know and dream warriors is great <laughs> sorry i didn't get to that at time dream warriors is awesome okay freddy's coming along nicely here is this looking like the part two, Freddy? For you guys, good enough for you guys. I wish I could get the glove somehow in there. I'm going to have to work on that. I'm going to have to work with that. So I will probably finish this up later tonight just on my own. And uh, I'll throw it up on Facebook if you guys check there. This is cool. This is turning out awesome. I love Freddy. I really want to get... Nika has a Freddy 2 action figure. They also have that NES Freddy action figure, which I love. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I think the glove is going to be a little too hard to get in. Once I did one of these, like there's a promo picture of it coming up this way. Like that. That could work. Do you guys like that or not? The glove coming up that way. Because we, I could definitely do that. That might be fun. Let's see. I know, Jared. <laughs> he always has it. <laughs> Back when I was like 10, he used to bring that thing to conventions. Granted, he built it, so I don't know if that's a little bit more of a different situation. Yeah, let's go with that. 
Why not, right? Fortune favors the bold. You got to get Freddy's glove in there. So I'll slap that in later. But just so I know it's there. So cool, cool, cool. All right, guys. Well, before we end fully here, let's take a look. Uh, I will finish this guy up later, but we've got the Milky Way Galaxy. Uh, Steve the Fish Boy. And Dr. Hannibal Lecter. And then from last week, Jason, Leatherface, and the Predator. So I think what I'm going to do is we'll do this again. Is this, do you guys want to see sketch trading cards again next week? Because I've still got a whole pack of them. <laughs> So uh, let's see how many were in here. 20 sheets. Uh, I've got seven done. So maybe I'll do, well, seven coming. So maybe I'll do three more, and that first 10 will count as trading cards, series one. And then we can move on to some other stuff. So uh, if that's what you guys would like to see next week, that's, I think, what I'm going to do. But uh, I've had a blast. I hope you guys have had fun watching uh, thanks for joining in. Thanks for commenting and just, uh, just I don't know, spending a Thursday afternoon hanging out with me and uh, watching me draw and rant about random stuff. So uh, I had a great time. Thanks again, everybody. And uh, I'm going to end the stream because I do got to jet. My wife will be steamed if I'm late to pick her up. <laughs> so we'll see you guys. Take care and uh, see you next Thursday. Bye.